We're talking with Tim Bost of Financial Cycles Weekly. Tim, are you there? I, I am indeed, Larry. How are you today? I am good, my, my friend. When I posted up your first chart here today, I noticed in the upper left-hand corner it said fin uh, Fibonacci Galactic Trader, and uh, we know you. You and I both know that we lost Jeannie Long, you know, on Monday. You know, uh, right, she was the right. the start of that, and uh, I really I have one great memory of uh, uh, Jeannie Long, and that was oh my 25 years ago. She was having a Christmas party down in Fort Lauderdale, where, where her and Robert Krauss were living, uh -huh. and so I went down. To spend a couple of days with them, and uh, there was a man there from Canada named William Drummond, the Drummond Drummond geometry guy. Right, right. And 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 he was there. And Tim, I've met some really interesting people in this business, but boy, let me tell you, he was off the charts. I had never met anybody with that much confidence and overextension of what his abilities were in my whole life if you know what i'm trying to say i mean he said he said things that couldn't possibly be true i mean like the quantity of things he was trading 10,000 treasury bonds at a time you know okay <laughs> i mean I, I just i just shut up and let him talk because i knew that i was going to get in trouble if i did anything other than than that and uh <laughs> any, anyway i shared I, sh I shared it with Jeannie afterwards and she said yes yeah. she said i saw you over there smiling anyway uh did do you have any uh, interesting stories of uh, Jeannie that you'd like to share with us i mean that's putting you on the spot a little bit oh, but well, you know we, we had I, many I, many lovely encounters and it, uh in fact uh i i guess it was about uh, seven eight years ago I, I had a chance to sit down with her and talk about uh, how she got started uh, uh, with uh, astrological studies and and with market studies, uh, and it was a very fascinating tale. Uh, but I first encountered Jeannie uh, back in the in the mid '80s uh, when I attended a, a conference uh, and uh, connected with one of my mentors, Olivia Barclay uh, from England. I had uh, studied horary astrology and medieval techniques with her, and uh, uh, we had uh, gotten together at this conference in uh, Connecticut, and uh, it, it, as is the case with many affairs like that, there are multiple speakers going on, and I said, Olivia, who, who are you going to go hear next? And she said, oh, I'm definitely going to go hear Jeannie Long. She's a fellow Brit, and people pay her thousands of pounds for her advice on the markets using astrology. And I said, well, i got to hear this. <laughs> and so Olivia and I sat together and listened to Jeannie talk about uh, trading gold uh, with astroanalysis. And uh, that was really an event that opened my eyes to the potential uh, in this whole field. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. She was not only was she beautiful, she was a really a beautiful human being. She was just very, Indeed. very... Real Always first kind class. and generous and, 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 and yeah. very, very gracious on all occasions. Yeah. yeah. What, what are you seeing in this S&P chart with the Pluto resistance and the Mars trend and all these galactic lines? You want to explain to the folks what you're looking at here? Uh, what we're looking at here, uh, and, and these are, are planetary price line projections with uh, of the software that uh, Jeannie and uh, Robert Krauss uh, uh, developed uh, some years back called the Fibonacci Trader Galactic Trader. Uh, the Galactic Trader component adds the ability to put in planetary factors on a chart, which is something that I rely on a great deal. Uh, the more or less diagonal red lines are uh, the increments of the movement of Mars. And what we can see is that uh, the S&P has been tracking along Mars channels pretty nicely here over the last few months uh, and is continuing to do so. What we're looking at are the horizontal lines on the chart, which uh, represent the positions of Pluto. And uh, we have seen some significant support back in uh, 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 early October on that uh, Pluto line. Uh, and uh, we're uh, seeing that uh, then defining a horizontal trading channel uh, between a potential uh, Pluto resistance. We're projecting a little bit into the future future there uh, with a, a potential on that Pluto line of hitting uh, 32.2350 and uh, support and the, and the increment below that at uh, 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 30.7350. Uh, so uh, that's that's kind of the, the, the trading range that we're looking at right now. We are anticipating a potential uh, trading top coming in here uh, fairly shortly. And so that's why we're looking at these uh, planetary price lines to determine potential levels of uh, astrological resistance along the way. Wow. 
This sure is interesting. I, I notice there's, there's a lot of gaps on this chart. Is that the? Uh, that's just because you're looking at the S and P cash. Is that correct? That's right. S and P cash uh, on uh, okay. these are daily price bars, and so we we get some, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> rather than uh, tracking the the contract, which is a more continuous flow. Okay. Now, is there any any particular significance to the top blue line there, where it says Pluto resistance? Because I saw Pluto support hit it spot on. I just wondered if that was uh, right. We have not tested that resistance zone yet, but that's the next. Uh, these are our 24th harmonic planetary projections, uh, and so uh, that would be the next uh, logical level for Pluto to start factoring in in a significant way. And we, as I say, we have not uh, hit resistance there yet, so uh, we may get to test that. It may back off before it gets that far, in which case we'd start looking at uh, at other planetary configurations to get confirmation there. Do you, do you use any other any other tools like uh, any t uh, typical technical analysis in your uh, in your oh, approach? Absolutely, you know, yeah. you, you've done. You we, we, we combine a lot of, of uh, tools, uh, some, some GAN techniques, uh, 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 take a look at Elliott wave counts, uh, uh, and mm -hmm. of course Fibonacci projections and uh, retracements as well. Uh, and, uh, and, and in addition to that, uh, when it comes to trade setups, uh, you know, we're looking at very, very simple indicators like moving average crossovers and so forth. <laughs> very good. Now, when you when you when you do your because you've done very well for the, uh, uh, the the timer digest. You've been in that rankings quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. When you when you do a technical analysis, what comes first, Tim? The astrology or the technical analysis? That's one of the questions someone's <laughs> asking us. Well, that's a great great question. And actually, uh, because we have an astrological bias. Uh, well, first of all, when, when we're, we're, we're tra trading primarily individual equities here, uh, so mm -hmm. and in doing so, we're concerned with stock selection, and we use an astrological filter first uh, to simply narrow the, the playing field a bit uh, in terms of the astrological parameters that suggest we might have uh, potential trading candidates. Uh, once mm -hmm. we've done that, we've got uh, on a week-to-week -week basis a, a universe of about 75 to 100 particular uh, stocks that we're looking at. Uh, and then we go back and look at the technicals. We also do a quick fundamental scan. We like to have uh, uh, stocks uh, that have companies behind them that are actually in business. <laughs> and so uh, we have a little bit of a fundamental bias there as well. And we want to look and see are there earnings reports or other events of that sort coming up you know, from that fundamental dynamic. So we're really combining technicals, fundamentals with the astro analysis. We begin with the astrology. We look at the other uh, factors then to filter things out. And then based on that, if, if a particular uh, uh, equity looks uh, uh, fundamentally sound and it looks uh, like good timing from a technical standpoint, we go back and then do another astrological pass uh, to refine our tools in terms of uh, the precise timing and price points and so on. Uh, so it's really a circular process, mm. I guess, is the best way to describe it. That makes good sense. One other question someone's asking is, do you use the date of origination of the corporation as part of your analysis? Uh, we the use uh, the yeah rather than the incorporation date per se, we use what we call the first trade date, uh, and uh, this is the the uh, date that the stock was first publicly traded. That's a significant time. Wow, very good. All right, well, stay with us, Tim, and we'll look at the second chart that you've got okay. for us. We've got Tim Bost on the line at Financial Cycles Weekly. We'll be right back with folks. Tim Bost. Tim, do you want to tell us what you're looking at on the uh, second? Uh, Right. Chart that uh, we have here. This is a chart of our uh, current astro cycle projections, and we uh, uh, rework this chart oh, about once a month, every six weeks, something like that, uh, to try to get a feel for uh, what the cycle analysis says about uh, uh, upcoming probabilities for the markets, and then we coordinate that with the astrological dynamics uh, that are coming up. Uh, the black line here is simply the S and P based on uh, closing prices and a, a line chart. Uh, the red line on the chart is our cycle uh, projection. This is a composite cycle uh, based on uh, 28 of the the uh, of the top cycles we've been able to identify so far with the S&P, mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, what we've seen here is pretty good correspondence. We did get a divergence uh, uh, between the actual price movement and the cycles uh, uh, back around uh, the first few days of, of December here, and uh, we've got some mm -hmm. unanticipated bullishness going on. But what we're looking at is point A on the chart coming up uh, this weekend on the 21st. Mm -hmm. That'll be be this Saturday, we have uh, the solstice coming up. It's the winter mm -hmm. solstice in the northern hemisphere, the summer solstice in the southern hemisphere, a very important uh, date uh, there. And uh, 
uh, we're anticipating a, a trading top coming in uh, in connection with that, which means we could see it a top hitting as early as tomorrow mm -hmm. on Friday the 20th or uh, waiting until uh, Monday the, the 23rd uh, and still correspond uh, pretty closely with that uh, timing date uh, from the astrological perspective. Uh, then we're looking for a move uh, downward into the solar eclipse coming up on the 26th of December. And then finally, at point C, uh, we've got uh, the lunar eclipse two weeks after the solar eclipse. Uh, this is uh, going to be a very, very powerful event there as well. Is that, that has some effect with the January effect that we usually see every year. Uh, well, not every year. We see it in quite a few years in the stock market where the small yeah. caps gain on the large caps. Exactly. Yeah, that, yeah. that uh, yeah. we always uh, pay attention to that January effect when it does occur. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, one, one of the things that's interesting about that uh, particular date on the 10th of January uh, is that not only do we get a total lunar eclipse, but we also have uh, the planet Uranus making a direct station, which is a pretty powerful signal of t potential turning points in the markets uh, around that mm -hmm. uh, time as as well. So that combination uh, kind of light that date up uh, pretty strongly from the astro trading perspective. Uh, we're going to be paying mm -hmm. close attention to, to that time frame. Well, anybody that's been uh, living through the last seven or eight decades certainly will remember January 8th from our friend down in Tupelo, Mississippi, that was born that day, Elvis Aaron Presley. <laughs> exactly. You know, Tim, <laughs> Tim, on point A there, we have a real interesting uh, chart this week from one of our friends over in Las Vegas showing that uh, the times that the market has topped on the 19th of the month in the last uh, four trading year, four, four quarters, I believe, that uh, he oh, said really? this. I post, I, oh, yeah, it was amazing. It was either a top or a bottom on the 19th of the month. And what's today? Oh, today's the 19th Hello. of the month. <laughs> I don't know if that means anything, but it was a really interesting chart that uh, that he posted. And I, I, the fact is, at the end of the show, I'll probably repost it to let the folks see it again. But And he does a lot of great research, but it follows along. I'm interested in that divergence there because, you know, since August, this thing has been pretty much spot on. I mean, you know, it's just been probably a correlation of uh, probably better than 75%, just eyeballing it. And then in the sense uh, uh, early December, it has diverged a little bit. Now, do you see inversions in this type of a thing very often, or does that never happen? Uh, well, I can't say it never happens. <laughs> but oh, uh, yeah, well, and the question is, how, how often is often? <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, yeah. I mean, is, is it unusual to see something like this? No, we, we, we will often see inversions, and uh, uh, we uh, try to factor that in with other planetary uh, understandings. And, for example, the previous chart we looked at with the, uh, the S&P tracking uh, that uh, uh, Mars uh, trend line, uh, what we're saying here is that Mars is taking over, uh, you know, with the astro cycle short term, uh, but we do believe the solstice is going to be more uh, powerful than that Mars trend. And so that's why we're looking uh -huh. at a potential top coming in here. Okay. Now, the next chart that we're going to be looking at is probably going to be taking a little bit of explanation. That is the work of uh, W.D. Gann. This was his uh, master wheel, isn't it? Uh, right. Yeah, his, his master wheel. And uh, yeah, he had a lot of different uh, tools that he developed. Of course, the uh, the square of nine uh, uh, grid uh, in, in the middle to determine the exact price points. Uh, and he was mm -hmm. very interested in the angular, relation, angular relationships uh, uh, between specific prices in the markets, but also coordinated those price levels with specific calendar dates. And this is what we wanted to point out uh, with this kind of close-up of a section of, of, of one of his wheels uh, that he used uh, with his master wheel here. And we circled mm -hmm. this at the bottom of the diagram there. It notes uh, uh, December 21st that correlates with 270 degrees uh, in uh, the zodiac, uh, which uh, corresponds with uh, zero degrees of uh, Capricorn. Uh, in, the, in the zodiac. So uh, all those were factors that Gann was using uh, to determine key points uh, in the year in which there was a higher likelihood of market inflection points. And he paid mm -hmm. particular attention to the four cardinal points, uh, which mark the beginning of the four seasons of the year. Uh, mm -hmm. We have in, uh, the summer solstice and the, and the uh, winter solstice in uh, June and December. Uh, and then we also have the fall and spring equinoxes uh, in March. March and September. So these quartering points in the year were very, very important in GAN's calculations. Uh, and we wanted to point that out that uh, 
uh, coming up just in a couple of days here, uh, <laughs> right in time uh, for the end of this week, we have uh, that December uh, 21st date that GAN paid a lot mm -hmm. of attention to. Mm -hmm. Well, you've you've shown three dates here: December 21st, December 26th, and January 10th. So there we'll be watching those, you know, very very closely. For you know, that's something I think that you've done pretty good. Now you're going to have. Let's just bring this up so the folks can see it. You're going to have a free webinar coming up here, I think, and I think they'll right. be interested yeah, the, in that. We're, we're going to be doing this uh, Monday uh, afternoon of next week on the 23rd as we get ready for a little mm -hmm. holiday break. Uh, we thought it would be a good point to review what's uh, working now in Astro Trading. It's a free webinar. You can sign up by going to bit.ly slash astro now. And that's a case-sensitive uh, web address there. So uh, A-S-T-R-O need to be capitalized and then N-O-W in lowercase in order to get you to the right page for the free registration for that event. And the B-I-T dot L-Y, is that lowercase also? Right, that's all lowercase. Okay, so, okay, okay, great. Well, exactly. those of you that are listening, you can certainly check in at the den here to get that address. And I want to thank you for coming on today and wish you and your bride a uh, wonderful holiday season down there in Sarasota. Thank you. Are you going to do any, any you doing any traveling or are you going to stay home? Uh, actually, we are going to be in Charleston, South Carolina, uh, where my stepson and his family live. And we'll be uh, oh, uh, in, yeah. in, in, and he always imports some Maine lobsters uh, for Christmas Day. Oh, uh, so sure. we, we, we traditionally be, have I'll a Christmas there, tradition. Come on yeah. down, <laughs> right? And uh, we, we have a little bit of lobster and Dom Perignon to br bring in the uh, this uh, Christmas oh, season wow. with uh, in style. <laughs> so that's the way uh, that's, we proceed. That's very good. Hey, so, listen, thank you for being with us. But Don Perignon was a house wine, man. That's uh, that's living the life, buddy. You're living the tall, well, the tall life Jeannie, now. Yeah, I had a, a great time with Jeannie Long one time. She was, was testing different vintages of Dom Perignon in her kitchen. And so we spent an afternoon, uh, you know, uh, right. discreetly sampling, shall we say. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we do the same thing here, but it's two buck chuck. <laughs> All right, Have a great listen, holiday, Larry. Yeah, great to talk you, to you. Hol Happy holidays to you. We'll be right back, folks. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight.